politicians have been educated for a whole lot of days to still not have learned the way to lead our nation straight. Everybody seems to ask for money to help a needy place, but most of our money is being shot up into space. And we are rolling. So welcome everyone to Solivate Podcast. This is where you get your soul on. This is where you get to soul off. And this is where you never soul out. And today, our guest is actually synonymous with the meaning of the word soul. So before I introduce this super special guest, I got goosebumps right now, man, because this human being means the world to me. Um, so Solovate is a two man podcast, but unfortunately, the soul of the Solovate podcast, Spencer Reese couldn't be here. So shout out to him. Um, uh, he wanted to be here. So he's here in spirit. So shout out to him. Um, I, I just didn't want to forget, man. That's my partner in rhyme. Um, so there's there's a little backstory, if you don't mind, to the introduction. So um, a few months ago, I was in the uh, Rolling Stone America's Next Top uh, Hitmaker. And this is where I got reintroduced to the next guest that I'm about to announce. And is this person a musical legend? Absolutely. To me, he's much more than Mozart, than Beethoven, than all of these guys. And, and I'm being honest right now, but what <clears throat> what we're about on the on this channel and this movement is about the human being, right? Who are you as a human being? And when I went down the rabbit hole of this special human being, I realized that this is our legend. This is our prophet. And this is someone that we need to celebrate. Let's not celebrate these people when they're not here. Let's show them how much we care about what they do right now so ladies and gentlemen without further ado i still can't believe this is happening the hands of soul the legendary the prophet of today mr joseph Wooten, man. i'm gonna have claps right here <laughs> okay yay i'm gonna have claps right here mr Wooten. um thank you so much for doing so this man. The man it's it's a pleasure Nas. it's a pleasure you look so good. You look like a rock star. Me and my mom was talking about. I'm like, don't don't this guy look like a rock star, man? I'm like, oh, he, he's probably you know, know it's, some people you are know, born the, with it. Man. Yeah, I don't know the 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 rock star thing is a that's a consideration. You know, people people feel a certain way, but you're either a, a good person or you're not. Or there's all kinds of good ways of being a good person. I try to be a good person. And I play rock music, so maybe you're feeling the two merge. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Wood, and we we heard we kind of heard your story before piece by piece. Um, but before the musician, if there was ever a time like that, um, before the Joseph Wooden that the world knows, where are you from? Like, what's your backstory? Because I know you have an incredible musical family, like. If you, you know, in short or in law, and it's up to you, what was your childhood like? What were some of your inspirations that made uh, you who you are today? Well, my whole life has been music except for five years. I uh, started playing when I was five, uh, when my oldest brother, there's five brothers, five Wooten brothers. One has passed away, so there's four remaining Wooten brothers. Sorry to hear that. And the oldest Wooten brother was Reggie. When uh, my older three brothers are three, three, four, and five years older than me. So my oldest brother, when he was 10, I was five, my little brother was two, uh, realized that they were playing their own instruments. One was blowing their recorder, you know, little flutophone kind of thing uh, in Hawaii. And then my other brother, Roy, AKA Future Man now, beating on everything. And he was playing Roy's ukulele, Reggie was, and he could play everything. So he realized, uh, looking for something that he, the whole family could do together. So he looked at <clears throat> five-year-old me and two-year-old Victor, 
and you know i'm gonna teach you to do this teach you to do that we can have a band so he taught us at the age of five to play and we started learning you know and he taught us well enough that just three years later we had moved to that that was in hawaii by the way my dad was in the military but um he taught us well enough that just three years later we opened for war uh and when we moved to california and you know you're young so but uh have you heard the song why can't we be yes of course well that was by a group called war or or they also had a cisco kid was a friend of mine and they had uh the low right yeah that's a badass song man yeah Yeah. well we opened for them uh back when uh i was eight years old victor was five and it was just three years later after he taught us to play so he taught us to play well and that's my childhood is growing up uh with brothers playing music we played nightclubs on weekends i mean i was playing nightclubs when i was in the third grade wow victor was in kindergarten you know we're playing nightclubs and concerts and officers clubs and and all of that but my parents weren't musicians but they were musical they weren't musicians they loved music my dad could sing he loved music and my mom you know you wake up especially on sunday mornings you'd hear Mahalia Jackson and Nina Simone, you know, wow. on, the, on the turntable. So my mom was, my parents were really concerned with us being good people. And uh, and we, they knew that we would take care of being good musicians, but that's not, that's not what they were really worried about. So my childhood was kind of music and discipline, you know, music and character. When I say discipline, I don't mean punishment. Mm. I just mean having the discipline to be a good person. My mom was really really uh she paid attention to that part of us and we paid attention to the musical part we practiced you know long and and we practiced seriously and every all the brothers inspired everybody because we're five brothers that play five different instruments wow everybody was getting really good really fast and you didn't want to be the person who was holding everybody back by your inability to keep up Uh so it was a very a very fun way, a very fun, inspiring way to grow up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so basically, you just mentioned, and I know I read that you come from a military family, so you guys moved around. Um, so, mm-hmm. were, were you born in Hawaii and grew up in California mostly, or like where would you say you were raised and grew up at? Well, all over the place. I was born in Ohio. Oh, okay. I call Ohio the funkiest state of the union because Ohio, Ohio has uh, Dayton, which had you know, Heat Wave and Slave and yes, Lakeside sir. and Shirley Murdoch and the JBs and and the, <clears throat> and the Ohio Players. You know, I was born in Ohio. Three years later, Victor was born in Idaho, Mountain Home, Idaho, and then uh, we moved to Hawaii for about four years. That's where we started playing music from Hawaii. We moved to California, just outside of Sacramento. Wow. And that's where we started playing and making money, nightclubs and and big concerts. In 1972, we moved to Virginia. Okay. And uh, in California, Curtis Mayfield had offered us a recording contract. And uh, we knew that we were going to, my dad was going to be retiring and moving to Virginia back towards the family. Both my parents are from North Carolina, so there was family in Virginia and North Carolina. So we got to uh, we got to Virginia uh, Halloween night, 1972. Wow. So I guess this last Halloween was whatever that is, 52, yeah, 52 years ago. 52 years, yeah, wow. 52 years wow. ago. That's crazy. Getting older. That's but crazy, it's, man. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to grow up, an inspiring way to grow up, uh, just a fun way to grow up. And uh, yeah, I was, I was going to ask you that, man, because, you know, a lot of uh, these prodigy uh, chi- children, you know, that grow up to be these amazing musicians, such as yourself, I consider you as <laughs> one of these prodigy children, you know, a lot of there's 
a lot of also stress that comes along with all of that. Would you say that your childhood was more fun or like was it, you know, over like it was too much at times? This is Sullivan. No, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. You know, both my parents were balanced. So, you know, a lot of times the household goes the way of the parents. Yes. So my my mom was balanced and my, my dad was disciplined. So that part of it was nice and stable. We had a stable place to play music. And that's how it was growing up, playing music with your brothers. There's nothing. I mean, as it is, people will starve themselves for a chance uh, for a chance to rock. Yes, sir. And uh, we were doing it. We had brothers. We had musicians to play with. We had parents uh, that went with us. So, you know, we weren't playing, you know, these adult places and then learning to drink and smoke. Yeah. We were playing music, you know, learning to be good people. Yeah, so I was going to. Great way to grow up. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was going to ask you, so your parents were supportive, like, all the way, right? Very much so. Yeah, wow. very much so. Once once my mom realized that was, once my parents realized that was going to be our path, then they did everything they could to support it. When did mm -hmm. you realize it was going to be your path? When did you have that epiphany, like, man, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life? Well, when we were, when we started you know, rocking nightclubs. We knew, right? We knew this was something that we could feel that it was something that we were born to do. So at that point, you know, probably when I was in the third grade, I knew what I was going to be doing with the rest of my life. Wow. Because we were doing it already and we didn't see a reason to stop. We knew that we were five unique brothers. We knew that we didn't look up and see another set of five brothers playing yes. their own instruments and singing and dancing and and all of that. So we knew we knew that we were something special. Uh, but we also, my parents made sure, especially my mom, made sure that we were the right kind of people. And that yeah. that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's something that I really stuck out with me when we spoke on the phone for the very first time. And I was like, uh, I was really bragging about it to my wife because, you know, this is the mission that we are on. And when you told me that, look, my mom told me that it doesn't matter how great you get in music. If you're not a good person, then you haven't succeeded. And that right. really that really touched my heart. So God bless your mother. Um, no doubt you know wh wherever she is so before the jackson five were the wooden brothers the first superstar mega musical family well we back then in those days we weren't mega we weren't mega anything we're still we were starting out you know we were starting out so we opened for curtis mayfield and we opened for war and uh but this was like 1970 1972 so we weren't mega superstar anything. And truthfully, you know, I'm not sure that we ever reached that that status. Yeah. Mm. We were very good people. Mm -hmm. And we we certainly rubbed some shoulders with with uh, some top notch folks. Uh we had, you know, had a record deal in the eighties. You know, my brother played drums on uh Whitney's debut single, You Give Good Love. On that same record that was supposed to be her second single, that's me singing along with her on a song called Thinking About You. I keep thinking about you, baby. That's me. Amazing. So we were we're rubbing shoulders with some heavy hitters. I mean, we opened for Ramsey Lewis and, and uh, the SOS band. And uh, back when it was just Mays, before it was Frankie Beverly featuring Mays. And, Ashford and Simpson, Gladys Knight and the Pips. We had done a good deal. But, you know, my my thing has been the proximity, the proximity to to rock stars. Now, you know, if you play bass, you know, my brother Victor's on the top of the mountain. Yes, so, sir. yeah, it's, it's, it's been fun growing up with him and watching him develop and watching all the other brothers develop, watching Roy invent new kinds of drums and watching Reggie 
unlock all of those thumping, plucking techniques on guitar and bass and watching other uh, other artists get a chance to run with that technique. It's been fun. Yeah, man. When I, you know, you're being humble right now because, you know, my, <laughs> my, my, my musical knowledge is not that crazy. You know, I'm a hip hop head. I'm also an immigrant kid. Like I came here in the mid 90s. So I missed on a lot of, you know, American pop culture. But when I mentioned to my brother in rhyme, my soul of a brother, uh, Spencer Reese, that we were, you know, possibly talking to Joseph Wooten, he's a musical genius himself. So he yeah. bugged out. He bugged out. He's a young man. He's 23, but he knew exactly who you guys were. Right. And he started breaking everything down to me. The impact that each of you have had on a whole genre and a whole music scene in America. So maybe you yourself, sometimes, you know, genius artists, they don't know the kind of impact, <laughs> the kind of impact that you might have had on the world. But from what I'm learning is you you have had a huge impact and you are now continuing to have an impact, you know, and in a different kind of way, which I wanted to get into later because I think your mission is what's so important. And I want to mm -hmm. I want to get into that. When did you first uh, start writing songs and do you remember the first song that you wrote? <laughs> um, well, when did I start writing? You know, when, when we grew up, we grew up playing music. So being creative in all kinds of ways was just part of it. Like, like, uh, like when we lived on 47 Tillerson Drive, when we lived on Tillerson Drive in, uh, in Newport News, Virginia, three bedroom house, there's like 14 siblings on my 13 siblings on my mother's side and 14 on my dad's side, I believe it is. Ooh. So there's just hundreds of cousins and every Labor Day, we'd have this big giant cookout at our house in mm. Virginia. We lived in this in this all black neighborhood, but not it wasn't a ghetto. It was a, it was a neighborhood full of uh, black retirees. Mm. So there was, you know, front yards and backyards and, two cars and garages and, and they made sure that the lots were a certain size mm. because they wanted to attract a certain clientele. It was in the state of Virginia, you know, because the, the folks in Virginia would rather build a neighborhood full of all black people than have black people move into, the, into their neighborhoods yeah. back when the fair housing, mm -hmm. when it became illegal to, to discriminate. So we lived in this great neighborhood and uh, we would have this giant cookout every year around Labor Day. And there'd just be just hundreds, just more people than the house could hold. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was some, it was some of the most, uh, most fun times that we had. But one of the games that we would play, uh, there was a, there was a, a thing we had heard on a commercial talking about beans. It's like beans, mm -hmm. beans. New country style beans, the army, the navy, air force, and marines. We pack them. <laughs> we pack them. Don't use no machines. That's Ooh. why we call them new country style beans. And then we just start doing bean rhymes. You know, going around just laughing. All the kids. You know, we're probably probably between eight, ten, twelve years old. They taste so good. They taste so fine. All you ever want to do is sit down and dine because we rap and we back. You know. <laughs> don't need some even Barney Rubble sit in the bathtub. You then you have tons of bubbles because you and we would now wow. we didn't really think about that as being creative. We just playing yeah. Yeah. games. We we play games like that, making up little songs and adding to it. So that sort of that sort of was a natural part of being in the family. What I would start to call songwriting probably started for me. Hmm, maybe, maybe like the ninth grade going into the 10th grade or something. Like 15, That's, 16? Yeah, something like that. Because I realized, I realized at some point that I could start to make an impact with what, 
with what I what I had to say, you know. Yeah, when was the first like do you remember that experience of <clears throat> actually, you know, and how did it come about? Did you know the song structure? Did someone show it to you like and can you possibly remember what those lyrics were? Okay, now we we had been like again, from elementary school, we had been playing great music. Right? Cuz back in the back in the early 70s that's a that's the greatest time of funk, R and B, pop music, maybe all of it, rock and roll. So we're playing good music. So I had a good background to write from. The first thing I remember writing, that I remember writing, I remember I was going into high school and I wanted to do something big at my high school because my all my oldest brothers had. Mm. My oldest brother wrote the alma mater. Mm -hmm. that they still sing now he wrote it and orchestrated it for the for the orchestra they still use his arrangement now he did that wow. when he was in high school mm -hmm. uh uh my my other brother roy was a stellar musician there and then my brother rudy used to blow two saxophones at the same time and he would always win the jazz award wow. blowing two horns at the same time mm -hmm. so it's my turn and i remember i wanted to do something so i i had i was writing this big thing and I remember, uh, I had a song, cause, cause my songs, I was, my song said, uh, politicians have been educated for a whole lot of days to still not have learned the way to lead our nation straight. Everybody seems to ask for money to help a needy place, but most of our money's being shot up into space, you know? 